In the previous video, we saw that rate laws can only be determined experimentally. If we have a reaction with a single reactant, we can do multiple experiments in which each experiment begins with a different initial concentration of the reactant. In this situation, if the concentration of A doubles from one experiment to another, but the rate stays the same, that means that the reaction is zero order with respect to the reactant A. So the rate law would be rate equals K concentration of A to the zero power, or more simply, just the rate equals the rate constant. However, if between two experiments, the concentration of A doubles and the rate doubles, that means that the reaction is first order with respect to the concentration of A. We would write the rate law, rate equals K times the concentration of A to the first power. If, however, between two experiments, the concentration of A doubles, and we notice that the rate quadruples, in that situation, the reaction is second order with respect to the reactant A, and the rate law would be rate equals K times the concentration of A to the second power. If we have a reaction with more than one reactant, the experiments that we do will be just a little bit more complicated. For example, if we have two reactants, we'll have to do a series of experiments in which we change the concentration of one reactant and hold the other reactant constant, and then switch so that the second reactant is changed and the first reactant concentration is held constant. Let's look at an example where we have one mole of NO2 reacting with one mole of carbon monoxide to produce one mole of NO and one mole of carbon dioxide. We can do a series of three experiments where we change the concentration of first the NO2 while we keep the CO concentration constant. And then between the second and third experiments, we keep the NO2 concentration constant and we change the concentration of the carbon monoxide. We record the initial rate for each of these three experiments. In order to write the rate law for this chemical reaction, we need to pick two experiments in which the concentration of the NO2 changes, but the concentration of CO is constant. We've already indicated that this situation can be described by experiments one and two. Next, we'll set up a ratio of the rate laws for experiments one and two so that we have the rate in experiment two equals the rate constant K times the concentration of NO to the M power multiplied by the concentration of CO to the first power. In the denominator, we'll have the rate for the first experiment, and then on the other side, we'll have the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of NO2 for the first experiment multiplied by the concentration of CO for the first experiment. Now we can solve for the exponent m. We can simplify by filling in the data for the rates and each of the concentrations. We can cancel out the rate constants in the numerator and denominator since they're the same. And we can also cancel out the 0 0.10 to the n power in the numerator and denominator since those are also the same. When we divide what's left over, we get four equals two raised to the m power. Now you might be able to e easily see that the power of m should be two since two to the second power is four. But if you did not have such an easy situation, you could use logarithmic functions to help you identify the value of m. In order to do that, you would take the log of both sides of the equation and then the exponent would go down in front of the log of two. So we have log four equals the exponent m times the log of two. We then isolate the exponent m, so we have log of four divided by log of two equals m, and when we enter those values in a calculator, we see that the value of m is two. We now want to repeat this procedure for two experiments in which the NO2 concentration is constant but the CO concentration changes. This situation can be found in experiments two and experiments three. We set up the ratio of the rate laws, so we have the rate in a third experiment divided by the rate in the second experiment. 
We then set up the ratio for the K concentration of A concentration B part. So we get K concentration of NO2 squared times the concentration of CO to the N power. And in the denominator, we have K concentration of NO2 squared concentration of CO to the N power. In this case, the K's cancel. And since we have the same concentration for NO2, those terms cancel as well. If we look at the rates, they're essentially the same. So when we simplify the equation, we end up with 1 equals 2 to the n power. By inspection, we should note that anything to the 0 power is 1. So the value of n, in this case, is 0. Next, we'll want to write the rate law with the values for m and n. When we do this, we see that the rate law is rate equals k concentration of NO2 to the second power times the concentration of CO to the zero power. Or more simply, the rate equals k concentration of NO2 to the second power. Now that we've identified the rate law for this reaction, we can calculate the value of the rate constant as well as the units for the rate constant. To calculate the value of the rate constant, we select any one of the three experiments and we plug in the values for the rate and the concentrations into the rate law that we just determined. You then rearrange the equation to set the rate constant on one side by itself and then you could do the calculations to find the value of the rate constant. If we do this, we have k equals 0 0.0021 divided by 0 0.10 squared if we're using the first experimental data. And this gives us a value of the rate constant of 0 0.21. Now we have to think about what the units for the rate constant are going to be. From the previous video, we know that if we have a reaction that is second order overall, the units of the rate constant are molarity to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. So the rate constant for this experiment is 0 0.21 molarity to the minus one power, seconds to the minus one power. By now, you should be able to determine the order with respect to each reactant in a reaction based on experimental data. You should also be able to write the specific rate law for a reaction. Finally, you should be able to determine the value and units of the rate constant for a given reaction using the experimental data for one particular experiment in a data table.